Hello everyone, good day. This is Ibrahim, Spiritual Community Animator. I hope you're all doing well. And today I have a small story to read to you, a short story. It's called uh, Viola Desmond Won't Be Budged. And before we begin, the illustration, the beautiful illustration that you're going about to see uh, in a second are made by Richard Rudnicki and the book is written by Jody Warner. Uh, I'll be reading the physical book and I'll be, of course, uh, you could follow from the PowerPoint that I prepared. Uh, before we start, like usual, please make sure that you have a mindful posture. Your feet are well grounded on the floor. Make sure that your back is straight and that you're not, you know, crushing your lungs so that you could have enough breathing room uh, for your lungs and your stomach. And with that, we can begin. So Viola Desmond was one brave woman. Now, come on here, listen in close, and I'll tell you why. It was a day with a zing in the air when Viola set out on her way. She waved to Gladys and Sue. Sue, who worked, at, uh, who worked for her at Vice Studio Beauty Parlor. Then she stepped into her car and drove away. Viola drove those winter wet roads with care. She had a meeting to attend three towns away. But guess what? She never made it there. First, she heard a, a rattle. Then she heard a clunk. And her, and her car began to shake. Quick, quick, Viola drove into New Glasgow, Nova Scotia to a garage. The mechanic said it would take some, t some hours, some long hours, to fix up the car. So Viola made plans to pass her time. She walked up the street and down until she came upon the beautiful Roseland Theatre. I'll watch a movie, Viola thought. And she stepped up to the window to buy a ticket for the show. So that you can see better. Her ticket in hand, Viola found the perfect seat. Right down close where she could see real good. But then she felt a tap on the shoulder. She looked up into the face of the usher you have a cheap upstairs upstairs ticket she said you have to go up to the balcony well said viola that cashier must have made a mistake i'll just go and buy uh, i'll go on and buy me a main floor ticket then the usher shook her head no you people have to sit in the upstairs section. Right then, Viola understood crystal clear what she was saying. It was 1946. Back then, the Roseland Theater, like a lot of other places in Canada, was segregated. That meant black people were not allowed to sit, stand, or even be in the same section as white people. And Viola felt sad. Viola felt scared. But most of all, Viola felt mad. Look, she said, I'm willing to pay the right price. And this is the seat that I want. So I'm not moving. Well, said the usher and went to tell the manager. Well, said the manager and went to phone the police. And before you knew it, all three of them came up to Viola to insist that she move to the balcony. But I told you Viola was brave, didn't I? She wouldn't budge one inch because she knew this seating rule wasn't fair to black folks. It was just plain wrong. So the manager and the policeman dragged her out of the theater in a real rough way. They took Viola to jail. Can you believe it? She sat on, on, on a hard bench all night long and tried to keep her spirit strong. 
The next morning, Viola was taken before a judge and charged with not paying the price, uh, the proper ticket price. She tried to explain that she was happy to pay more for a downstairs ticket, but they didn't listen to her. None. Viola was charged a fine of $20, which was a whole lot of money in those days. Then she was free to go. Viola was glad to get back home to her new beauty parlor. When people came by to visit, she told them what happened in her, uh, to her in New Glasgow. The story made them angry too. So Viola and the black community groups in Nova Scotia decided to appeal, um, to appeal her charge. A year later, in 1947, they faced the Nova Scotia Supreme Court. But all the judges there sure didn't want to talk about racial segregation. They said Viola's case has been fair, and they canceled her appeal right there. Still, Viola's bravery made a big difference. She inspired all kinds of people to fight against segregation, and by the late 1950s, it was made against the law. So come on and join me in saying thank you to Viola Desmond, a real hero who sat down for her rights. And that's the end of the book. Um, I told you about a few discussion questions. So let us go over them. And I want you to share your answers either with uh, you know your your classmates, the students beside you, uh, with or with your teachers. So, what emotions do you think Viola uh, Desmond experienced when she was told to change seats? What do you think she felt? What emotions did she go through? My second question: What do you think is a good way to channel those emotions? What, what would you do or what do you do if you experience similar emotions? And my third question for you is how can we support someone who is experiencing injustice? If you see something happening in front of you at recess, outside, uh, what is something that we can do? How could we show support to someone who's experiencing injustice? So think about those questions, share your answers, and I hope that you uh, enjoyed the story. And I look forward to seeing you in your classes. Enjoy the rest of your day.